let's talk about Deptus. Does anyone know what Deptus is? Back in code. Well, yeah, at some point, yes. That's a way you can check back in code. More or less. We'll, we'll see the details. Yeah, it's one of the things why we use DevTools. So, DevTools is essentially a utility that comes already built in with any modern browser. So today I would like to talk about Chrome DevTools, but in reality, any other browser has DevTools. Yeah, Safari, Firefox, Edge, even the old Explorer, the latest version, of course, they have uh, DevTools. So, um, DevTools is an amazing role. You can do many, 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 many things, but today I'd like to talk about the basics, or at least the most important ones for uh, development purposes. Look, so what you can see at the moment on my screen, this is one of the Coldflix applications. That means that eventually you'll have something sort of similar. So what you got here, you got, uh, you got a layout and then you got a menu and then you can click in one of the elements, you get some synopsis, you can play a trailer. You know, that's Coldflix, right? This is essentially what you are building. Um, so the first thing is how do we enable the tools? Well, there are different ways. My favorite one is simply do right click anywhere on the screen, literally anywhere, and you will see at the very bottom an optional icon inspect. That is, yeah, generally speaking, at the very bottom. Once you click on inspect, what you will get, if it's the first time you run it, you get something like that. At the bottom of your screen, you'll get an overlay with some, you know, some tooling. We'll see in a minute what that means, yeah? The very first thing is, you should feel comfortable with the layout. And I don't really like the default layout of Google Chrome DevTools. Why? Because the majority of the, con of the content can be read from top to bottom, vertically speaking. However, by default, DevTools shows at the bottom. So I see a lot of empty space on the right-hand side, but then I struggle to read the content on the left-hand side. So even though this is very personal and, and you may have different opinions, I like to put the DevTools on the right-hand side instead of at the bottom. And how do we do that? You see there are three small tiny dots on the right-hand side of DevTools, on the top right corner. If you click on the, these three, the three dots, you can change the layout, you can change the position, right? So, first of all, I like to drop it on the right-hand side, yes, which is the last option. And then that feels a bit more natural to me, more natural, because, look, whatever that means, you know, it looks like I can use, I can do a smarter usage of the available space in my screen, right? Cool. So, the next question is, what options do we have on DevTools? The first one is the elements panel. So, what elements means? What language is that, guys? Let me zoom it a bit. That's HTML. That's correct. That's correct. That's the HTML resulting from your React application. That's the output of your React application. Yeah? You see the HTML tag, the head tag, the body, blah, 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 blah. And you may have noticed that as soon as you hover, I don't need to clear, I just need to, you know, move the cursor, some elements on the screen get highlighted. Yeah? So that's a good opportunity to play around with your uh, HTML. So what can we do here? Well, for instance, can I remove elements from the HTML? Look, if I remove that element, Black Mirror, yeah, it's gone, you see? So I can interact with my application. Do you think that these changes are persisted in my code or not? No. Not at all, right? This is just for testing purposes. In other words, if I refresh the page, Black Mirror and Breaking Bad, they are back. Yeah? So again, this is good for debugging, for quick testing, because sometimes it's much easier to experiment with the tools than going to VS Code, change something, go to the browser, wait until it gets refreshed. So it's, it's, it's sometimes easier to play around. Of course, this is not only about HTML, it's also about CSS. 
So for instance, let me select one of my items. So uh, look, you see, I got different items. So at the bottom, I got the CSS, the resulting CSS. So if, for example, you are trying to add a border and the border doesn't work, you can check on the CSS panel what happened with your border. Yeah, maybe that property has been overwritten by another uh, class or whatever. We'll talk about, obviously, CSS rules in the tomorrow, I think it's not in the morning or in the afternoon, but we'll talk shortly about CSS rules and specificity, what the specificity means, which is a classic interview question. So, uh, for instance, can I, can I add, can I prototype, can I add some styling? Look, let's try to add a border to the first box. You see the, the blue one, right? The first one, I can come here, I can do border, one pixel, solid, red. It's hard to see, but if instead of one pixel, I put 10 pixels, yeah, you can see the, the border, right? So, of course, now I can play with colors. If I don't like red, I can play blue. Sorry. You see, so for instance, now, if we type that text, that code into VS Code, it doesn't work. Where is my blue border? It's nowhere. Yeah. But now, if you pay attention to the line I wrote, you can see why it doesn't work. You see, look, the line is a strike through. It's like wrong. And if I hover the warning icon, invalid property value. So does anyone know what the problem is? Correct, correct. According to CSS, we need a space between the type of border and the color. Yeah. Remember, we got UI training. So you can start playing with borders, padding, margins, colors, font size, italic, bold, all these things in the Codiri platform at any time. Yeah. All right. So I see, I guess you see how can we play with properties? You see how, how easy it is, right? It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice for debugging purposes to use Google Chrome DevTools. So that's the main panel, the elements panel. Yeah. Then the most important one, at least in the short term, is sources, which doesn't necessarily have to be the second one because you can rearrange tabs in Chrome DevTools using drag and drop. Yeah. So please find your sources tab. And in here, you'll essentially be able to debug your JavaScript. I'm not going to debug my JavaScript at the moment. We'll talk about that in the future. But I would like to show you a hidden feature in Google DevTools that is extremely convenient, especially if you want to play with the code a snippet like the board challenge. So with Google DevTools, we can create JavaScript code snippets and we can run code easily, very easily. How do we do that? First of all, select sources. And then you will see on the left hand side a panel with many things. And then there is a tiny icon, which is two right arrows. If you click on it, by default, you'll have something like, I don't know what's the default option, content scripts or page or something like that. I don't know what's the default, it's probably page, right? So if you click on the right icon, you'll see something called snippets. Snippets, that's one of my favorite features in Google Chrome. Why? Because you can create a snippet. You see, new snippet. And as soon as you create a snippet, you can rename it, of course, if you want. I'll call the snippet Hello JavaScript. Because eventually you may have hundreds of snippets. So a snippet is just a piece of JavaScript that runs in the browser. Yeah. So what do we need to do to create a snippet? There is only one tricky thing that I'm not going to explain now why we need to do that. That will be explained towards the end of the bootcamp. But for now, simply remember to do that. Every time you create a snippet, please surround it with curly braces. Like that. Only once. So you open the curly brace on the first line and you close it at the very, 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 very bottom of your snippet. Yeah? 
We'll explain at the end of the bootcamp why we need to do that. This is about scoping in JavaScript and will simplify your life in the long term. Once we do that weird step of adding curly brackets surrounding everything, we can start dealing with JavaScript. I mentioned before that I like to have the dev tools on the right hand side, especially when I want to interact with the application, changing colors, prototyping stuff. That's fantastic. However, if I don't really care about the application, if the only thing I want to do is to do a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of JavaScript, there is another even better way to display dev tools. So if I click again on the three dots, look at the first one and dock into a separate window. That's fantastic because if I click on it, DevTools becomes full screen. I have more space, right, to breathe and to type more content without any scrolling. So let's do some coding. Let's do some JavaScript because this is literally JavaScript code. I can do whatever we want, right? So let's create a function in JavaScript function Hello world. So hello world will return welcome to Codiri. Semicolon, right? To avoid elegant issues, as we learned yesterday. So once we create our sexy function, the only thing we need to do is to invoke it. So after declaring the function, we need to run to invoke it. Yesterday, we mentioned that in the Codiri platform, this is not necessary, right? You remember that line number six is unnecessary because the platform will do that for us. But because here we don't have the Codiri platform, we just have raw DevTools editor. We do need to call it. So what will this function return? Welcome to Codiri, correct. And how do we test that? How do we evaluate the result? Look, on the right hand side, you got a button to run the snippet. So if you click on the button, right, let me try that. If we click on the button, right, we got something interesting. This is something I wanted to alert later on, but now it would be a good opportunity. There is one problem with DevTools. The problem is sometimes fails. Yeah, you need to be aware of that. Yeah, this is, and this is controversial because sometimes you don't know if the snippet doesn't work because of you, because you may do things in the wrong way or because of the system. In that particular case, yeah, I believe there is a problem with the system because look, I'm running the button and nothing happens, right? Nothing happens. Um, so let's try to sort this out somehow. So let's try to display a console log and see if anything changes. At least you see, if I do a console log, that shouldn't be necessary in DevTools. But if I do a console log, it works. You see, a console log, console.log is the way you can print, print messages into the console. You see? So you type console log and inside of the console log, you invoke a function. All right. So again, you press on that button and it displays the console log. I recommend you to clear the terminal, clear the console every time you run it. Otherwise, yeah, it could be a bit complicated to see the changes, right? If I clear, now I got an empty canvas. So I, I know that whatever it returns now is my last attempt, my last iteration. All right. So also there is a shorthand, there is a shortcut. So if you don't want to move your uh, cursor to the button, you see, you can simply press a shortcut. If you are a Windows user, the shortcut is control enter. If you are a Mac user, the shortcut is command enter. That means that I can do some coding. Welcome to Codiri, exclamation marks. And now I press command enter and that's it. Yeah, it's, it simplifies a bit the process of creating uh, some code snippet. How do we change this function, guys? If we want to say welcome to Codiri, so comma E1. But we don't want necessarily to say welcome to Codiri E1 because we could say Nilofer or anyone, right? So in other words, we want to have a dynamic function that says welcome to different individuals. How will we do that, guys? A variable. How do we do that, Nilofer? 
Yes, but the thing is, I want, look, I want to call that function twice. So I'll have two console logs, if that makes any sense. Another function, no, I don't want to have another function. I want to reuse hello world, but in one case I want to say welcome to Kodiri E1, and on the other case I want to say welcome to Kodiri E Lofer, or anyone else, of course. Does anyone know how to make this function dynamic? A variable, where? A par okay, here, instead of the parentheses. Yeah, correct. We call that an argument. That variable is, in speaking, called an argument. So we can, add, uh, we can add an argument, yeah, with the name of the person, right? Person name. And then what else? Plus person name, like that. Plus person name. And then what else? Outside where? Outside Yep. So in here, at the time we invoke hello world, we can pass an argument, right? So the function expects a single argument called person name. So in here, we can do that, right? So that string, that's a string, I hope you agree on that, will be assigned to that variable name. And we can, of course, do that as many times as we want. You see how flexible JavaScript is. I don't need to create another function every time I want to change the name of the person. I can simply do that. What do you think, guys? Will that show welcome to Kodiri and the person name? Do, do you think, do, can you see any, any problem, any small problem? In other words, will that display, look at the bottom, I'm typing some text. That's correct, that's correct. Look, yes, look at what NAE suggested. There is no space between code and the person name. If we run the snippet, you see, still okay, but not very, the UX is not fantastic, right? If you sign up into a platform and you say, welcome to Facebook keyword, like what was that? What was that? I don't get that message, right? So simply add a space after code And now if we run the code again, now the text is way more readable. We agree on that? Cool. Do you remember any other way of solving, concatenating literals and variables in JavaScript? Backticks, fantastic guys. How do we solve the problem using backticks? Get rid of the quotation okay, we get rid of that. Backticks. Backticks where? You want? Before the W, you welcome. Yeah. Like that? That's it? No. The what, sorry? Dollar sign where? In front, dollar sign. Curly brackets. Like that? Remove the plus, fantastic. Well done, guys. Remove the plus. Something like that, right? And the message is a bit more natural now so we run it again it will talk the same thing so towards the user is the same result but our code is a bit more sexy yeah what's the technically what's the difference between um, um, you know when you call the function yeah words, yeah the yeah that's a good question so when we invoke the function we're executing the code but one thing is to execute the call. Another thing is, okay, you execute the call, your function return, welcome to Kodiri Abdul. But now, what do we do with that message? We can do multiple things. We can send an email. We can, I don't know, display a message on the screen. But in that particular case, what we want to do is simply to log, to display the text, the result of invoking this function into the terminal, into the console at the bottom. Yeah? So I hope you get the idea that using Google Chrome, DevTools, snippets, we can play around with functions. So my suggestion for the day will be that you copy these snippets in the, the, the word challenge snippet into DevTools and you play a bit with examples to get a better feeling about what they do. And one more thing from my side. What, to me, one of the most powerful aspects of 
snippets and I'll be asking that question on a daily basis or every time I run a, a workshop is breakpoints. Does anyone know what a breakpoint is? Correct, 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 that's correct. Let's have the, set, the following example. Imagine that this is our code, like that. We only have one welcome message, yeah? What will that function return? Nothing. Nothing? So, Parik said, Welcome to call Diddy space undefined or simply undefined. So Neil Ofer said it will return simply undefined. Anis, what do you think? Anyone else? So what will that snippet return in the console. Welcome to Kodiri. Yeah. So Iwan said welcome to Kodiri. Mmm that's interesting. Vincent said welcome to Kodiri undefined. Any other opinion? Error message. Abdul said error message. Right, so and I said undefined as Neil Offer. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You see, that's why snippets are so useful. Because I think all your opinions are sensible, but thanks to DevTool, we can easily see who is right. I think one of you is right. Let's see who. Look, who's right? Mr. Vincent, right? Why is that? Why is that? Because person name is undefined, but template literals backtick still will try its best to display a message, right? Welcome to Codiri undefined, yeah? And how do we really know that person name is undefined? We can have a breakpoint. A breakpoint is an extremely useful mechanism to stop your code in one line and then to inspect the state of the art, to see what is the value of your variables and what's going on, right? Because in that particular example, it's pretty simple. We've got one variable also. But in reality, you can imagine that we may have more complex scenarios where we may have five, six variables and the result may be ruined because one of them is not the expected one. So, how do we add a breakpoint? Look, we can simply uh, click on each line number. So, if I click on line number six, you see the green box, and then I can click on line number three as well. So, my question is, and I'll be asking that many, many, many times, can you tell me the execution order? Which line will run first, line number three or line number six? Slide number six. Why? That's correct. That's correct, Nilofer. So we have a hello world function, but that function won't be executed until we invoke it. Yeah. So even though line number three is above line number six, so it looks like it will run first. In reality, in reality, first we try to invoke the function and then we'll execute that function. Let's run it again. Right, so now, again, look at the problem I mentioned before. DevTools is not responding because it's not stopping on my breakpoints. Whenever that happens, I used to do two things. First of all, if I have a feeling that this is not my fault, that this is Google Chrome's fault, the first thing I do is close the tab. Yeah? It's, it's a bit 90s, but it's the way it works. So I close it. Ideally, I kill Google Chrome completely. Yeah? 
but in my case, I'm going to at least kill the tab. So I'm going to open a new tab. And I'll try again in my new tab. So I'll find where my snippet is. Hopefully that should be easier for you because you'll have less uh, snippets. And once I have it, I'll add breakpoints again to see if my problem is sorted or not. Let's try again. You see, now it works. That's the way to prove that the problem was on Google Chrome. How do I know that? Because if I'm wrong, I'll be wrong all the time, right? If my code doesn't return what I expect, it doesn't matter if I run it one time or a million times, it will be wrong all the time. However, now, literally just closing the tab and open it again, it works. It may fail again at any time, yeah? That's to me the main problem with the tools. It's not consistent, it's not reliable. That's a big pity because the tool is super powerful. So just be aware that it sometimes fails. So now, however, at least it's back. So we can clearly see line number six is highlighted. That implies, that means that we're stopping the execution on that line. And if we continue executing the snippet, now bear in mind something, don't run the snippet again. If you're in a snippet and you run it again, Google Chrome will go crazy. Instead of doing that, you have this resume script button. In your case, it will probably be on the right hand side, depending on how much you are zooming the code. You see? If you click on that button, it will play again. It's like a YouTube video, right? You stop it and then you play again. So it will play again until the next breakpoint. And if there are no breakpoints, it will just finish the execution. Of, of the snippet. So if I click again on the resume script execution, stops on line number three. And because now to stop on line number three, I can evaluate my variables. Look, you see person name undefined. That's the problem. That's the problem. Even if I hover it, you see it's very useful, it's very good. Person name is undefined. And then you say, oh, I forgot to pass the name of the person at the time I invoke the hello world function, right? So that means that you can finish the execution and then go to line number six and then put the person name and put Richard. And then if we run the code again, you see, welcome to call DD Richard. Yeah. Questions? How do we? The brick. Yeah, you need to select the line where you want to stop it. Yeah, for instance, where do you want to stop? Line number three. I click on line number three. And then next time you run it, it will stop on that line. Yeah? So then you can evaluate variables and everything. And to continue executing the snippet, you click on the play button and it will finish the execution. If you don't want to run to stop on that line anymore, you click again on line number three and then next time you execute it, it will run end-to-end -end without any interruption. Yeah. How do you find snippets on, on there? Snippets and what? Yeah, on the dev tool, how do you get to the Java code? Yeah, yeah, so this is it's recorded on the video, right? So we can, you can catch up later on, but essentially, if I close them, any, anywhere, when you open a new tab in Google Chrome, you do right-click, oh, inspect, that will open the tools. Then you need to go to the sources tab. And once you're in the sources tab on the left hand side, you need to select snippets. You see the tiny arrow pointing to the right? Snippets, so then you can create a new snippet. That's the way it works, right? So again, my suggestion is, every time you have to deal with an algorithm, it doesn't matter if it's simple or complex, just try on dev tools. And the board challenge is clearly a good candidate to start dealing with the snippets. Anything else, guys? No? All right, so let's leave it here. And I'd like to show you something, but I'd like to do that offline.